The Government of the Virgin Islands on April 1st will be introducing a new customs and immigration form. This decision was made after the approval of Cabinet that the Customs Declaration Form and the Immigration Entry Departure Card be combined to streamline the entry process. For the Department of Information and Public Relations, I'm your host, Assistant Information Officer Berta McKelly. With me today is Acting Chief Immigration Officer, Mr. Ian Penn. Mr. Penn, good day. Good day. The new Immigration and Customs Declaration Form. Why was there a need to combine these two documents? Thank you for having me on the show. The need to combine these two documents are simply one, to create efficiency at the port of entries, and two, to keep in line with regional trends where this is widely used among many Caribbean countries. If you can go into depth uh, to see some of the benefits that we can expect having this new form. Right. Some of the benefits with the combined immigration and custom forms include it reduces duplicity, meaning that there's just one form before it was two forms, uh, immigration form and a custom form. Now those two forms are combined and what used to happen is that the same information was required on both forms. So now it is just one set of information on one form. It is also user friendly. Okay, it is very easy to follow, very easy to fill out. There's no trick questions, so persons should be able to fill it out with ease. And it captures a variety of information that can be used by a number of agencies to develop or plan uh, marketing strategies for the territory. When I heard about the forum at first, Mr. Penn, I also thought about um, going green. Uh, can you say something about that? Yes, of course. Um, that's an advantage as well because at least there's one form now, so there won't be need to be printing um, two separate forms on you know two different papers. So it's one form, and you know it, as they say, you know um, you know reduces the need for cutting down so many trees. Of course, <laughs> of course. Okay. Can you list some of the challenges encountered with the old form? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, some of the challenges encountered with the old forms, both um, the immigration and custom forms separately, is that sometimes persons, you know, would get irated, especially if they come from a long trip uh, from Europe or the US and they have to stand in line or go to the side and fill a form, but you know they are given two forms with you know the same information, and sometimes people would wonder why you know they have to have two forms you know versus you know a single form. And we used to see the frustration a lot on um, you know persons who have traveled um, for long periods, and I think with this single form now. I think it's going to be very user friendly. People are going to be happy um, to know that there's only one form that they have to, you know, fill out coming to our ports. Okay. Mr. Ben, we spoke about how per the traveler is going to be benefited. How are the officers are going to be benefited from the change of this new form? Right. The, well, for the immigration side, um, there's only one form because we also had to look at both forms, okay. um, our form, the immigration form, and the custom form. We had to make sure that the custom form was filled out because we had to stamp the custom form to ensure that you know, they have passed the immigration officer. So a stamp was given to let the custom officer know that this person has gone through inspection by the immigration officer. 
So now it would only be one farm where the immigration officer would be concentrating on. Okay. So you can very much anticipate that the form will facilitate the entry process for visitors? Yes, I am certain that it will create efficiency at the port of entries because uh, the lines will move a lot quicker and people would be able to fill out the form um, much faster and easier as well. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Fenn. Uh, we will now go into a short commercial break. And when we return, we will continue with the new immigration form. Stay tuned. Out of the hooks of history's pain, our ancestors bled and died. We only have to turn the pages of our history to see the very foundations on which this territory was made. In them, we see a people who are proud of the beauty of their island and have a strong protective attitude towards their natural resources and their lands. Let us embark on a quest to create an environment to support the growth and expression of territorial pride in our citizens and residents. Join us in the quest to reflect Virgin Islands heritage and culture through a pledge that speaks to the pride, development and future prosperity of these Virgin Islands. The Territorial Pledge Competition is open to all BVI landers and belongers who are 15 years and older. The words pride, service, territory and Virgin Islands must be used in the pledge and must be no longer than 35 words. Sealed submissions must be submitted to the Ministry of Education and Culture in care of Mrs. Brenda Letsom Tai via email brletsom tai at gov.vg on or before Friday, April 15, 2016. As we evolve as a people, may we continue to find new ways to continue building our territory by utilizing the tenacity, technology, and pride of our forefathers of the past so that we can capture the true essence of Virgin Islands pride. Virgin Islands, your qualities can never be denied. Welcome back to our program. We are discussing the introduction of the new customs and immigration form. If you're just tuning in, we would like to welcome you. And once again, I would like to introduce my guest, Acting Chief Immigration Officer, Mr. Yen Pen. Yes. What are some of the key differences between the old form and the new form? Well, the main key difference is now that it is one form. Okay. Okay? Before, it was two separate forms, an immigration form and a custom form. And how it used to work is that all visitors entering the territory had to fill the immigration form. And if they're traveling as a family, say for instance, a family of five with spouse and children under the age of 18, then they would only be required to fill one custom form. Now, with the new form, if the visitors, say the same family of five, is traveling together, then all five are required to fill the immigration side of the form, and the head of the family, you know, whether the father, would only put the information to the back of his card for the rest of the family for custom purposes. Okay. For residents, belongers, and citizens of the territory, if they are traveling individually, everyone is required to fill the form. For residents, belongers, and citizens, they would fill Part A, from number one all the way to number 13. And then they would fill Part C, which is, the, which is to the back of the form, uh, for custom purposes. That's if they're you know, declaring something. Even if they don't have anything to declare, they still have to fill um, to the back of the form for customs. Now, 
If the residents, belongers, and citizen are traveling, traveling as a family, if they have a family, um, husband and wife, and children under the age of 18 years, then here's what will happen. Only one form will be filled by the head of the family, which would be, so the head of the family will fill the immigration section, part A, from number one to number 13, mm -hmm. and then to the back, which is part C, for customs. Then he would list his spouse and children named there. So those, so the spouse and the children will not be required to fill um, separate immigration forms. Okay. So that is very important to know. Okay. I know you mentioned the number 18, age 18. Does that mean that if uh, I have a child over the age of 18, that child will be required to fill the separate form? Or if I'm traveling with my sister, will she be required to fill out a, a, a second form? She wouldn't be made part of, of, of the group, the family. No, uh, exactly. So, so what I'm saying, if for instance, there's a family of five, you have the, the husband and wife, and you have two children under the age of 18, and you have a child who is probably 20, 25 years okay. of age. Mm -hmm. Now that child who is 25, or that person who is 25 years of age would have to fill their own form, would have to fill the immigration pad and the, um, and the custom um, declaration to the back, pad C, separately. Uh, the farm does not recognize or would say, um, you know, sisters or, or brothers traveling together because, you know, you are um, uh, adults. Uh, the family would consist of, you know, the, uh, the head of the family, the spouse, and children. So if you and your sister is traveling together, then both of you would be required to fill your own individual forms. Okay, um, important to know. So you wouldn't be sent back to the back of the line if you, you, if you were found uh, not following the rules. Well, in a case like that, in a case like that, um, the officers that are trained not really, not necessarily have to send you to the back of the line. Okay. Um, if you have to fill a form, then what they would do is perhaps ask you to to step on the side, okay. and as soon as you're finished, you know, then they will call you up to deal with you. You don't necessarily have to go to the back of the line. Very well. Yes. And but good to know that you can't. Once you're over 18, you can't travel, and your on anybody else's paper, but your own. Right. Good to know. Uh, Mr. Penn, um, can you go into explaining um, the different fields of, of this new form? And is it easy to fill out, first of all? Oh, yes. It is very user-friendly. Um, the form has three paths. You have path A, path B, and path C. Path A is filled out by every person who gets one of these forms to fill out. As I said before, uh, residents, belongers, and citizens, they would fill Pat A from 1 to 13 only. And Pat C, which is to the back, the custom declaration. Anyone else would have to fill Pat A and Pat B. All of Pat A. Pat A includes from number one to number 19, along with an email address, a signature, and date. So all that information would have to go in. Pad B on the form, that is to be filled out by the immigration official only. Okay. No one else. Is the form currently in every port of entry in the PVI? This initiative, we would like to start on the 1st of April. And um, we have already made strides to get all the forms to all the ports of entries and to all the carriers, including 
uh, the carriers, uh, the ferry companies, and all the airlines at the airport. We also uh, make, would, would be making progress to make sure that even the, the local yachting industry here in the territory, or the BVI Yachting Association, okay. and notified, and, um, and they, have, they are given the opportunities to have these cards on hand um, coming the 1st of April. 2016. Right. Mr. Penn, we know that other countries already are using um, a similar method of combining immigration and customs form um, in one document. How different or similar is our form, the BVI new customs immigration form, to that of other countries? I think this new form that we are introducing now is pretty similar to uh, most other countries in the region because um, when we decided to create this new form, we took a look at you know, what was happening in the region and the amount of information that was being captured and we designed our form on a similar basis, on a similar basis to capture the, the information that we would need for ourselves here in the territory. Okay. All right. Um, besides the Central Statistics Office, yes. what other departments will benefit, can benefit from the data that is collected using the, the entry forms? Well, you have the BVI Tourist Board, Okay. They will benefit from that information. And you also have the, the budget and physical plan unit in the uh, Ministry of Finance who would uh, benefit from uh, information derived from the information from, you know, uh, the, the e-card. Okay. Uh, for the benefit of, of persons, can you say how these departments would benefit? from the information that is captured? Right. The tourist board would use this information to um, target their marketing strategy okay. um, of persons coming into the territory. So what they may probably do would be to um, look at where persons are coming from most to the territory and try to increase their marketing strategy in those areas. So for, for Tourist Board, I, I think, you know, that is um, the main point of, you know, having this information. For the budget and physical planning unit, what they would do with that information is um, For every person coming into the territory, there may be a dollar figure attached to that, okay. right? So the budget and physical planning unit would use that to make um, certain projections for the budget um, or certain projections for um, certain um, projects or um, anything that the that they need information in terms of carrying out a particular um, project for the for the government. Okay. So they would use those figures to, and you know, manipulate those figures, you know, in order to you know get whatever information or projection that they would need um, for their cause. Okay. Good to know. Very good to know. Yes. All right. Has the distribution of these forms have already begun to other um, regions within the Caribbean, other airports? And if not, how do you intend to distribute them and how soon? Well, how that will work is that we won't distribute them directly to the other Caribbean countries. What would happen is the, all the carriers 
um, who would airlift persons from um, throughout the Caribbean, they would be the ones responsible to ensure that you know the cats at you know to their to their different um, ports um, where they would fly out from to the territory to ensure that the cats are there, so that when persons are booked to come to the territory, you know they are given the card to be filled out before they arrive into the territory. So the carriers would purchase the cards from immigration okay. and they would be the ones responsible for disseminating um, the cards to you know their different um, points where they fly from to the territory. Mr. Penn, the Immigration Department is starting to go through a process of immigration reform and has a series of initiatives underway for this year. What are some of the initiatives that can be expected from the department? Well, some of the initiatives, um, number one, we have this new initiative going forward with the new form, um, as we're here talking about right now. So we have the one form, and I am looking forward to see, um, you know, the benefits which will, de which will be derived from this one form. We also have um, customer service training, which was already started in the um, last quarter of last year. And I think we, um, you know, we have seen you know, the benefits from, from that training. Um, the training is ongoing. Um, so it, you know, it was not a, a one day or two day training because I advocated, I said that you know, I don't want anything generic. I want a training so that, you know, the officers could, you know, keep in line um, with the um, customer service trend. Because what will happen is that if we are not positioned or if we haven't um, keep in line with our customer service trend, then I think we would be losing out a lot. And as you know, we are living in the technological world. Yes. So yes. if customers come to our shores and they are not um, treated well by our um, authorities at the port of entries, you know, you know that you know, they could easily go on the internet you know, and spread this news, and then, you know, persons will, will not come to the BVI. Of course. So we have to look at it in the sense that customer service plays uh, or goes a long way um, in the industry, in the tourism industry, and we have to make sure that all officers are on the cutting edge um, in terms of customer service, because if you give quality and professional service to customers, they would also spread that good news and more persons will come into the territory. Definitely. And when more persons come into the territory, it means that the territory would receive more revenue. More revenue in the territory means that um, persons can get raises, um, the infrastructure of the territory can be improved and a number of different things can happen. So the customer service is, um, you know, one of the things that I was looking forward to as well. And I, I am happy to say, I am happy to say that thus far, that thus far the customer service training has, is proven, you know, to, um, to have been very good and we have been getting some good remarks from the different ports of entries, from the officers of the good service that they are providing. So I'm very happy about that. Um, another initiative that we are hoping to put forward this year as well is a public awareness, a public awareness campaign to let the public know about the services that the immigration department provides. I think that a lot of people do not know um, 
uh, some of the services that, um, that have been provided. A lot of people commit different offenses in terms of overstaying in the territory and they do not know um, um, what to do and sometimes they would you know listen to persons on the street and sometimes gets um, conflicting uh, information so I think it is very important that the immigration department um, um, take, take the initiative and you know do a, a, a big public awareness campaign and you know go through all the services you know that we provide and I think when that happens then people would get to understand and really know you know what they should do and what they should not do and you know I think they would be in, um, in good standing with their status in the territory. Okay, I'm looking forward for, for that. Yes. Mr. Penn, this brings me to the end of my interview. It has been a pleasure having you here. And I hope to hear a little more about the, the new immigration customs form, um, how everything turned out, the feedback from the community. Thank you for having me. The new immigration form is said to be a progressive move by the Immigration Department in the modernizing of its data collection for visitors to the territory. For the Department of Information and Public Relations, I've been your host, Assistant Information Officer Berta McKelly. My guest today has been Acting Chief Immigration Officer Mr. Ian Penn. To keep up with the latest events and to get the official government news, remember to visit the government website at www.bvigov.vg or follow us on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter at BVI Government. Only have to turn the pages of our history to see the very foundations on which this territory was made. In them, we see a people who are proud of the beauty of their island and have a strong protective attitude towards their natural resources and their lands. Let us embark on a quest to create an environment to support the growth and expression of territorial pride in our citizens and residents. Join us in the quest to reflect Virgin Islands heritage and culture through a pledge that speaks to the pride, development, and future prosperity of these Virgin Islands. The Territorial Pledge Competition is open to all BVI landers and belongers who are 15 years and older. The words pride, service, territory, and Virgin Islands must be used in the pledge and must be no longer than 35 words. Sealed submissions must be submitted to the Ministry of Education and Culture in care of Mrs. Brenda Letsom Tai via email brletsom tai at gov.vg on or before Friday, April 15, 2016. As we evolve as a people, may we continue to find new ways to continue building our territory by utilizing the tenacity, technology, and pride of our forefathers of the past so that we can capture the true essence of Virgin Islands Pride. Virgin Islands, your quality.